Cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all. Welcome to another episode of the Dungeon Mastermind Podcast. Uh, I think this is going to be a difficult one because I'm already not able to say the intro without giggling like a little 12-year-old girl. Um, Fun fact, Cooper has that effect on people. He makes them feel like 12-year-old girls. Uh, Read into that how you will. Um, (laughs) Coop and I go back years ago. Yeah. Like actual years. Um, Let's see. We met in, what was it, 2018, 2017? It was like a year after my deployment, so probably between 2016 and 2017. Okay. So 2017 then, um, we were working at good old Vasa Fitness. Yeah. We were selling memberships and personal training to people who didn't need it. Working out, standing around. Yeah, lots of standing around. Um, Lots of sitting in your little cubicle and talking about the day we would be on a podcast together. Very true. And talking a lot of shit, but the podcast part was a dream yes so, yes it was are. uh shout out the old vasa crew um hope y'all are doing well we are trying to do well yeah <laughs> well said <laughs> so yeah this is tyler cooper um a good good buddy of mine um so good in fact that i wanted him to be there when i married my wife and uh don't regret it and we occasionally exercise together Though uh, we could use a little bit more constitution these days, right? That part has faded. And that's what we're working on. That's what we're going to talk about today, folks. Um, Today we are talking about the constitution modifier. Constitution modifier um, is in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition um, related to your hit points. Um, It is a measurement of sturdiness, your... Excuse me endurance uh your fortitude and also your concentration um with spell casting specifically but i think that there's a lot more to it than just spell casting um we are going to do a little encounter um coop tell us your experience with dungeons and dragons i have none um i have quite a few friends who occasionally or even more often than that play dungeons and dragons and i don't know that i've ever actually been invited so that might speak to that a little bit says a lot but um we have spoken about getting together and doing dungeons and dragons so what i'm actually hoping to do someday is build my own table here in the basement and get friends in all different directions together to meet each other and play some D. would you consider yourself a dnd wannabe Sure, yeah. Yeah. I think I'd fit in, but um obviously a noob. Yeah. You'd look good in elf ears. Right. Yeah. And that's why you would play. Just to well, use the elf ears that he already owns. I prefer the spandex, yeah. Yeah. but the ears I I hear are a huge turn on for some, so <laughs> himself specifically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So we are going to kick off an encounter. Um Coop. Your character. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about him. So you made him for me, but I can tell he's a badass. <laughs> so uh, his name's Del Skysteel, which I love the name. Because um, of Del Taco. Right. Del Taco and Skysteel missiles. It's like a connection for me in my brain. So I like it a lot. Tacos and missiles. Um, What else do you want to know? So he's a human-ish variant. Mm-hmm. He's like a criminal spy background, and he's part of the um, what's it called, like King's Guard or something, but like secret society, King's Guard, something or other. Yeah, a little uh, inquisitor of sorts. Yeah, and um, I don't know how much of your like the scenario or backstory. You want. Yeah, man, give us a little rundown on his backstory. So he doesn't remember his family name. He was given it through the Crown's Inquisition as a baby. Uh, He was given the surname Skysteel as a reminder of the purpose he serves. He trained as an assassin, investigator, enforcer, 
um, grew up in harsh circumstances to be bred as a man capable of felling beasts and toppling nations. And so he's part of this elite arm of the Crown's Guard, and he's out um, watching on a mission with a senior inquisitor, uh, and he's a noob, new to the the group. And he's with a guy named Brend, and they're ambushed outside of the building that they're staking out. And then um, further it goes on to be like, we're being strung up and tortured. Brent's taken into the other room and starts screaming. That's so right. That uh, seems like a good spot to start off. You're exactly right. Nothing but happiness, sunshine, and rainbows over here in Dungeons and Dragons world. Exactly. <clears throat> so the event leading up to where we are at, um, you are staking out a building. Um, there is rumor of some arcane um, illegal activity. Um, your arm of the military is specifically trained to handle arcane practitioners, um, like handling street thugs and you know men at arms, pirates, things of that nature, um, is a little bit below the training quality that you've received as an inquisitor uh, mm -hmm. for the crown um, and so seeking out illegal arcane practitioners um, comes with an added layer of difficulty you know danger death opportunities Hell yeah. um, and lo and behold such as happened um, you were out staking watching at night um, what kind of play up to that point a little bit. Um, so if you would be so kind, um, I'm going to introduce a little mechanic that I would recommend you introduce in your games at home, Dungeon Masters. Okay. Um, out on watch, right? Um, while you are staking things out, whether it is guarding your party at night, while you take watch, uh, camping out under the stars, or you are out staking out for an inquisition, um, a perception check is most commonly used. And I think you should. However, I think before you roll your perception check, you should roll a concentration check mm. to be able to gauge your ability to focus on your watch. Um, and then depending on you know, the, the role for your concentration, you would either roll straight for your perception at disadvantage or with advantage, depending on how well you roll on that concentration. Um, be on the lookout on Monday. I'm going to introduce a little bit more on that mechanic on my Instagram, but it doesn't super matter because we're in the middle of the game. Focus up. So first and foremost, concentration, concentration yeah. check. This right. is considered a constitution saving throw. Okay. So you're going to roll. And in that top box on the left side there, your that ah, upper small box. This one. That okay. is your saving throw modifier. So you're gonna roll your fancy little fat D twenty as it gets to hit on the top panel. Fat D twenty going out. Four plus five. Not that good. Not that great. Nine. I'm not so in this case, I'm gonna ask for a perception check from you at disadvantage so you're gonna roll that dice twice uh, taking the lower of the two 20 Ooh, a nat 20 too bad and 15 okay Add your perception modifier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh perception you said yeah. plus three not it's a bad p, p for me uh i'm gonna roll a little ditty stealth check Oh, I saw it was the second one, so I don't know if yeah, that's The good second one was no bueno. Uh -huh. But the first one, I was rolling an advantage because uh, I was a special magic item. But I also have stealth. You absolutely do, and that's not what you were doing. Oh, uh, okay. Um, unfortunately, I rolled a 19 uh -huh. total on my stealth. One I also above. have a 19, right? You got an 18. Damn it. So, um, you and Brend, I guess I should... No, nah, we'll just leave it at you. You and Brend are out on watch, right? It's your turn to watch. Um, this is your first major outing as an Inquisitor. 
Um, it is a lot of pressure. There's a, a big bust that's about to go down on this, and you are going to be in the thick of it. Um, the, it's rumored that the people involved in this um, illicit arcane practice um, are sacrificing children um, to demons. So they are taking up poor orphaned children under the guise of adopting them um, and offering them as sacrifices to a demon of the nine hells. Um, and so obviously that's no bueno by just about any understanding of that uh, situation. Um, so you are trying to stop that, right? So naturally there's a little bit of motivation because you were taken as a child, right? You Ooh, were taken as right. a child to become what you are today. And these children are also being taken, but they're not going to be trained to be successful hunters and fighters. They are just going to die. Um, so there's a little bit going on there, but there's a lot of pressure. And I think that kind of affects your ability to focus a little bit. Um, and it's at this time that you get jumped by about 14 shadowy figures. Um, and you and Brend are, are, are pretty good fighters, right? Right. Brend is a big guy, uh, about seven foot four, right? Very, very big guy. Um, he wields a, a giant magical great sword. Um, and you are an arcane archer. Um, and so you deal more on, you know, long range stealthing from afar. Six, three, 210 pounds. Yeah. So not you're bad. also not small. Yeah. Right? Um, however, you are overwhelmed in this 14. scenario. Yeah. Right. Um, you come to, you are strung up, your hands are chained above your head. Um, you are in a cell that is just filthy. There's, you know, drying coagulated blood on the floor. Obviously you're not the first and only person to have been in this cell. Um, Brend, you remember in like a hazy, um, sort of coming in and out being taken from the room. And you can hear him actively screaming in the room next to you. Um, give me another perception check at disadvantage one more time. Nine. Uh, roll again. Oh, at disadvantage. You're right. You're right. Ten. Uh, and then add three, I believe. For perception. Yep. Yes. Wonderful. Um, so. The room is, is very dark. It's intentionally not well lit. Um, and there is someone in the room with you. Um, this is, I use the term someone loosely. It's mm. hardly a person. Um, in fact, half a person. Exactly half. Um, right at the waist is where their body ends. And this table begins. Like this person has been stitched onto an interrogation table. Um, they are a, a, a very pale, almost translucent with a light shimmer colored skin. Um, give me an arcana check. Plus three, 17. Not bad. Is that the dirty 20? You rolled it. That, my friends, is a dirty 20. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Super dirty. Filthy 20, dude. It's a gross dungeon. Too. <laughs> um, yeah, you would recognize that this person is a changeling. Changeling. Mm -hmm. And I know what that means. It means they are a race of people. Um, they are fey in nature. Um, they have heritage from the fey realm, which is a different plane of existence. Um, so think like the elves. Like a shapeshifter? Like they can change yeah, into exactly objects like right. this table? Kind Not of thing? objects, oh. but people. Interesting. So they can shift their, their physical features to replicate anybody that they have seen. So they've seen a person so do a table before? Not quite. Oh. You get the sense that this person wasn't super willingly stitched to a table. Ah, the, this changeling wasn't willingly stitched to a table. Correct. Gotcha. Um, do I know, do I perceive that this individual, 
although not willingly stitched, is a threat or not? Ooh, give me an insight check. Insight plus one. 18, I'll go with 19. That's not bad either. <laughs> um, a threat. That's an interesting way of putting it. Does this person pose physical threat to you? Uh, as if they could pose harm? Not necessarily. Do they come across as somebody who is wanting to help you? Definitely not. Mm, gotcha. Um given your surroundings and how things look and how you feel, how you were brought here, you get the sense that this person is maybe part of the room, that this is part of why you are in this like room. Like this is their job. Like I'm about to get interrogated by a change. For sure. 19 says for sure. Gotcha. <clears throat> and so okay. almost as if on cue, the chains release and you flop to the ground um, and realize that uh, the floor here uh, had about a quarter inch of filth on the floor. So wet like, filth or dry yeah, filth? Wet filth. That's worse. Disgusting. <laughs> you you hit with a schlorp uh, onto the the stone ground, and you can feel what like you know when you cut yourself before the blood really scabs, how it has that bubble where it's almost viscous yeah that's what you fall into yummy yummy <laughs> um you are ushered to take a seat directly across from the changeling who's ushering me the changeling okay so the changeling is taking me over to a table and he's gonna sit across from me mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. gotcha yeah uh, <laughs> What do I do? Um, behind the changeling is a a, a gate, um, like a wrought mm. iron, um, you know, jail cell door. There's no windows in this room. Just you, the table, the changeling, and the wrought iron gate, mm. and scab fluid. Yeah, scab fluid's not too fun, but um. I don't know. Thoughts here. So I'm not thinking that it's time to attack. That it just seems to set up, you know, like they released me from chains, you know. So obviously the gate is beckoning me. I want to escape and or go free my friend, Brend. But um, I think I kind of have to just see a little bit of what this changeling's game is, right? So do I do some like additional perception checks, talk to him, ask him questions, or is it just free reign? Welcome to tabletop role playing, ah. games, my friend. Do you take a seat? Um, I think so. I think I'm going to take a seat. All right. I don't. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll um, take a seat, and then in taking a seat, um. The, the chair is a simple wooden kitchen chair, no armrests, a short backrest, um, poorly made as if it was like an Ikea type chair, right? Um, nothing special about it. Um, looking across, the, the changeling uh, opens their eyes and looks at you saying in a voice that's almost sounds like there's like, rocks stuck in its throat like gravel um saying why are you here interesting <laughs> well miley cyrus why don't you tell me why i'm here <laughs> um the changeling shifts its face to match Brend. Oh, the torso kind of gelatinous form it takes as it shifts um, and becomes that of the big hulking Brend that you know. Mm -hmm. um, though matching what you assume is his current state, just beaten. Nose is completely bent over to the side. His one eye 
probably permanently closed from being struck so many times just massive lacerations covering his face um his other eye barely open bleeding from his mouth just cut to pieces um bleeding from multiple wounds in the head and and he says you need to tell them tell them what i can't tell them why we're here ah so changeling can shift to bren's physical form but doesn't take his knowledge on why we're present and therefore can't tell whoever's holding us in this room so i can tell whoever i want (laughs) um Huh. I mean, I want to I want to ask this guy why he's here and if he wants to escape. Hmm. Uh give me a persuasion check. Uh-oh. I have low charisma. Is that a charisma thing? It sure is. Damn it. It's not going to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, minus one. Say it, say it out loud. Oh, I got a three, and my charisma is minus one, so this change things obviously not going to be my friend. Yeah, I don't know if that really sold him. Um, oh, but I can try again. Okay. The uh, the changeling sees like you can see a little bit of frustration across their face. Mm. Um, He's trying to do a job as something falls from overhead. Um, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. Eight. And one. A natty one, y'all. That is a critical failure. Plus three dexterity. No, it doesn't doesn't do anything. That's great. So it falls on my head? For sure it does. (laughs) Um, And what falls on your head is like a child's bubble. Like... Someone had blown a bubble with a bubble wand. Only this one is jet black. And it covers your head. A and, bubble? Mm-hmm. And you begin to choke. That's and great. gag and cannot get air. I need a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. Six, and then if I get it, I have plus five constitution. So that's very, what, meh? You take... You're adding it all up, or what? (laughs) 17 points of necrotic damage. As your lungs fill with this black smoke seizing your lungs from within your chest your lungs quiver and shake similar to the feeling of when you are underwater holding your breath and you are trying to swim the length of a pool underwater as long as you can and you know that you have a little bit left but your chest starts to convulse a little bit because you just want to take a breath but you can't because you're underwater that's that feeling that you have Mm -hmm. right now where your chest muscles are tight Um, but it is in your lungs and you have no way of your brain to tie the feeling of your lungs to anything but the muscles and that's how your body is reacting give me two different roles i want an arcana roll and a constitution check so you're just going to roll add your constitution modifier and your proficiency bonus so we'll do the arcana first arcana not rolling too hot is a plus three seven and so you don't really know what kind of spell is affecting you right now um but let's do a constitution check so at roll and add your constitution modifier 17 plus 5. Or wait. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So uh, 22. That's pretty good. So you have this interesting introspection happen right now. Um, You're dying. 
Mm-hmm. You feel yourself dying. Uh, you feel your lungs giving up on you, um, and your other bodily organs are following suit very quickly. You don't know what this spell is that's affecting you, but you get a sense you could probably outlast it. Hmm. That however long this spell lasts, you could probably force yourself to take it and outlast the spell. And so that's what comes to mind. Mm-hmm. And my character, naturally, he keeps calm in these kinds of situations. That's like his thing. And that would, so if I'm calm, even though I'm choking, I'm not having a good time, and that's what comes to mind, then I think I'm going to trust, in this case, that instinct to outlast it and probably refuse to, like, struggle, assuming or hoping that struggling, in fact, would make maybe make it worse. Interesting. Give me an intimidation check with advantage. Intimidation check. I got a nine. And... Ooh. (laughs) It was a 20, but it went to a two. For what? Intimidation minus one. Dang, man. So I just died, huh? No. It's intimidation, right? So, like... Oh, like... Like, how are people perceiving you, right, in in this situation? Um, I think in your mind, you're pretty calm, but your body's dying. But I'm not scaring anyone. Either. Right. It's, it's not frightening anybody, which is honestly probably a good thing because they perceive you to be dead. Hmm. But I like this. you are not. I like this. So I, if it's, I'm ready to go again, I'm going to play dead. I don't know if there's like a stealth thing. Yeah, like there is called a... Deception. Deception. I like it. Which Hold my breath longer. Uh, let's Give do it, it to anyway. me twice. Give it to you twice. Take the advantage. As you wish. 13. And what was that? 6. Minus 1. Charisma. It's 12. Eight. Right, so you took the higher of the two for advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. I oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so better than... Yeah, not, not terrible, right? Um, better than 5. I mean, it... it you have never been dead before. You wouldn't know it if you were, right? You don't know these things. <laughs> um, but you are, you're taken out of the cell. Nice. And you see, uh, give me a perception check, just straight. 12. Okay, plus three, right? Um, perception, yes, plus three. Um. Yeah, you're being carried out and you see the cell where you just intuitively understand from the screams where Brent Brent is located. was. Gotcha. I say was because his soul has left his body. So that's part of the perception is I realize he's dead. He's super dead. Okay. Uh, they flayed him. To eat. Eat. Sacrifice. Torture. For fun. Okay. Or for fun. My man Brand is no moss, and you are Dang. led. He was a to, senior inquisitor, and you are just a junior boy yeah. who has no experience, and yet we'll find out what? maybe next time Tyler's on the podcast. Oh, right. So that, my friend, is Dungeons and Dragons a little bit. And there we are. There, Cole's there curtain. we are. Cole's curtain. Wow. Well, that sucks because that hurts Dell's soul because he doesn't like when his friends die. Most people don't. <laughs> well, Dell specifically <laughs> does not. No, no, no. Like you understand. His... He hates people dying. Yeah, he. Okay, he had a loved one once die on him. It's in his backstory, yeah. and he therefore hates it when his friends. I mean, you probably put that there on purpose, but the show. He hates it when his friends die. Sure does. So, folks, Constitution. Constitution is an interesting modifier. I think it is incredibly underrated as far as gameplay goes. Um, Again, just to recap, in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, uh, Constitution dictates your hit points. 
Um, so it determines how hard you are able to not die. It's a really poor way of saying that. Um, but your health, right? Um, it is directly tied to how many times you can be hit and not die. Um, it is also used in a, concentra a concentration check, so a constitution saving throw. Uh, for example, there are spells that require your concentration. Um, so, for example, the bless spell. It's a very classic cleric and paladin spell um, to aid in your party's efforts. Uh, but if you take any damage, you have to make a concentration check to see if you can maintain the arcane focus, right? That is required to maintain a spell like that. Mm. So a concentration check would be required in a situation like that. Um, additionally, you can use a constitution modifier to determine how long somebody can hold their breath. Um, yeah. Within the, the, the player's handbook, um, the way that the math works on that is you can hold your breath for one minute for um, every additional plus one that you have to your constitution modifier. So I got five minutes. So not your saving throw, but just oh, your modifier, gotcha. right? So you have three minutes, right? So that's a long time. Um, mm. The spell that was cast is completely made up, but I gave it a one minute um, casting time, which is a pretty typical concentration spell. Um, and so... Dell would have been able to hold his breath beyond and that, outlast right, and outlast that spell. Additionally, like if you're swimming or something like that, you can use that um, in there. So, how does concentration, not concentration, constitution, affect our real life? Cooper, um, you have an interesting background, man. Um, give us a, a brief rundown. We got Dell's, but I think yours is. Arguably a little bit more interesting. I don't know. Dell's pretty badass. For sure. Um, let's see. Uh, I grew up in Montana. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Moved here to Utah like seven years ago. Something like that. Whatever. Shortly before we met. Um, been in the military for 12 years now. Um, was recently an instructor in the military, a teacher for four years, got a new civilian job that I've been doing over the last year. I love that. Um, yeah. What else? I don't know. Had a great Montana childhood, played all the sports, you know, worked on the farm, did all the things and, um, yeah. And now I'm just, I got the dad bod. A mustache. Uh, things have gone downhill. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. I'm getting now, old. Now he's not allowed like, yeah. within 200 feet of any public school. Right. Except preschools. They like me for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Stupid kids. Didn't I'm just like kidding. That. Um, yeah, no, that was terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what else? Anything else? Yeah. So I want to know a little bit more for the folks at home what you do for the military. I think that has a, a good tie. Um, and that's partly why I like, came up with the character a little bit to, um, you know, glorify a little bit some of your training and experience um, and also some skills that I would uh, consider that you have. Um, so brag a little bit. Tell us, like, Yeah, I didn't even did. get to use Dell's longbow. Like that. Yeah, I know. That's probably my own fault, though, right? Well, I it got tried snatched. To shoot, uh... With what? You had your hands oh, tied. Oh, because I had none of my tools. You think they're going to leave you in prison with a bow? I don't know. That change thing was weird. He let yeah. me sit down. Um, <laughs> what was the question? Uh, oh, military background. Yeah. Um, yeah, I joined after high school. I saw it as an opportunity to serve my country. I also grew up in the LDS religion, and so I kind of had this mindset at a young age of like, serve God, serve your country. And, you know, then when he gets my age, have a family and serve a family. So there's kind of this responsibility aspect to, I guess, where I think I've been headed in my life. Um, and in the military, I joined the army as an intelligence analyst, um, which is just a fancy way to say, uh, you're kind of like part of a think tank, really, you, you try to be the 
commanders or, or the leaderships. Um, I think that we try to help them with basic strategy and understanding the uh, battlefield or a mission or an operation and kind of go through different processes to do some critical thinking and approach things from an informed position. Um, and then, yeah, I deployed to Iraq just the one time. Uh, I did have a desk job, so I was fairly safe, but it was a very serious and like intense and stressful desk job, as you know, um, where I worked, um, I specialized in targeting for a little while within my career field where I could go and help hunt down bad guys. Uh, From afar. Yeah, so I worked with a lot of different countries and different branches in service, and one of the things I did a lot of was work with the Air Force, and they would pilot the drones, and I would tell them where to go and where to look and um, how to find these bad guys, and then we'd go shoot missiles at them. And you effectively wrote the book on how to do that. E, sort of. Uh, this is like kind of a bragging point. Where That's like, why you're here. I, Yeah, it's kind of like maybe tooting my horn a little too much because at the time there was a lot of things that we had done that weren't common strategies or approaches to doing things. And in certain like ad hoc situations, we had to like come up with reinvent how to do some things. And then at the end of my stay there, I was asked to help uh, an Air Force captain edit and draft kind of like a, an initial playbook so that they could go and make, uh, I believe the plan was to go and make an actual career field in the Air Force out of that job. Because that job is kind of a combination of, you know, cross-functionality with other branches and services and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I'd say I did a good job. <laughs> um, Absolutely, but, man. That's so yeah. freaking cool. It's cool, but it, I, it also, like, you know, carries a lot of weight. No question. With me, and it was yeah. stressful, and yeah. But I do look back on that experience in a positive light almost all of the time. Yeah. Um, however difficult it was. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, so I think that I I asked this because uh, to me this segues really well to constitution in a real life example uh, for a couple things. One, um, I don't think I will ever forget you told me that you didn't once drink a caffeinated beverage while you were deployed in Iraq. Yeah, I, I forgot it, um, about this. So before I went, I was receiving some instruction from a really good instructor, someone who inspired me to be more like him later on when I became uh, a teacher myself. And he was so smart. I looked up to him. And then there was like this one day where he was unrelated to the religion thing. He was like, you guys, when you go over there, you're going to be so tired. You're going to need like coffee and caffeine and energy drinks. And at the time I was currently on like a health thing of like, I'm only drinking water. And I also like a challenge. And I was like, no, no, I won't. You know, just friendly banter. But he came off so serious, like dead serious, like Cooper, I swear, like you will need these. They call it ribbits. It's like a famous military it's uh, like the the army branded monster yeah, yeah. drink. There's like enough caffeine in half a can to like kill a horse, and people walk around. Well, it's probably a lie, but yeah. people walk around with like four of them in their hands. And uh, so I went over there, and there was like a period of getting into Iraq where I probably hadn't slept for at least two days, maybe three. Like, because you're just going from one spot to the next, and you're trying to get there, and you sleep on the plane, and you catch naps, but no real like. Mm -hmm. hey let's sleep in a bed kind of no a thing long rest and you get easy. there and you're trying to get in your your chew your combat housing unit and get all set up and go to your job and it's my first deployment so i'm also kind of like peeing a little because i'm scared i'm like where do i go it's like basic training all over yeah. again you got your bags and your your deer and headlights and people are just yelling at you where to go and i don't know I, i'd say i was still fairly calm um and like ready to go but uh i get there i buy an energy drink because I was so damn tired day one going in to learn my job. And I sat on the desk and I didn't end up drinking it. And I put it in my fridge, little tiny fridge in our little combat housing unit. And uh, 
like six months later, it exploded in the fridge <laughs> because our AC went out and it was like super hot in the room. And at that point I was on day shift with my buddy and it's like 110 degrees trying to sleep, losing five pounds of water weight, sweating overnight. Like anyway. And, uh, but I was really proud to say that the entire time I didn't, and I was really engaged. It was a really engaging and stressful job. So that was probably my driving force, but yeah, I didn't, I just challenged the dude and I was like, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drink caffeine. And I just didn't. I don't know. Truly incredible. Like, I can't go <laughs> even 12 hours sleeping without caffeine. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm kind of weird in that way. Like, stimulants, like pre workout, my like lip and forehead will start itching and I'll like, I'll want to lift the gym and start itching my face with the bar. And mm-hmm. like, you know, it, I, I react weird to them. Like I'll, I'll take a nap after drinking a thing and my heart rate will just be going a thousand miles per hour, but like I'm content sleeping. Like, it's just, it's weird. So there's like that aspect to it of like, eh, hmm. my body. yeah, man, I just like, I think that is like mental fortitude at its finest, right? You you make a decision and you choose like I'm gonna die on this hill. Right? And how long was your deployment? In country nine months. Yeah. And there's some time getting yeah. in and out sure. training. So that's a long time. Yeah. Especially doing what you were doing as in an, as stressful of a situation as you were doing with as little as great of opportunities that you would, you know, require something as as simple, truly as like choosing to not drink a caffeinated beverage, right? Um, I but was ready to give up day one. I believe it. I believe <laughs> and it. And two and three, but yeah, no, it was turned out good. So, so that's an interesting. Uh, w- at what point do you think you stopped wanting the energy drink? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it was out of sight, out of mind after <clears throat> a couple of days. Right. Like after the first day or two carrying it around, then I put it in the fridge and out of sight, out of mind. And and then I kind of focused on like getting sleep. You know, it was a 12 hour shift. It was really stressful. So I'd work out afterwards to like decompress and then go to sleep again. And it was very it was a very easy, like forced structure mm-hmm. that allowed me to kind of just go with the flow and I didn't need it. And I don't know, maybe a few no. days, but so I love that so much. Surprised you remember that story. Yeah. Oh dude, I think about it constantly. Like almost yeah. every time I have an energy drink, I'm like, Coop would be so disappointed in me. <laughs> and then I drink it anyway because I am a full blown addict. Hey, I've had energy drinks before and since, but is I guess not in my mind. Cool story, so. Okay. Not in my mind. Gotcha. You are perfect. Oh, thank you. Um, man, so have you read the book uh, Atomic Habits? Uh, is that the James, yellow one? James Clear, I believe. Is, is the that author. the yellow cover? I have one that's um, about it's like habits. White, it's like a yellow cover. Okay. And it's got an atom. <laughs> then no. <laughs> um, I have read a few uh, habit books, and I think my favorite one was like a yellow cover. But okay. Um, well, like what you were saying kind of supports – the the book a little bit um and it's the author i believe is james clear um talks about habit stacking that should you want to change your habits or introduce a new habit you stack other habits that push you or almost force you to that habit yeah no that's perfect i've been doing some of this recently right exactly right so the the concept of, you know, like not say the choice is not to drink caffeine, right? And that is a, a choice, right? It's taking the initiative to throw it back to last week's episode with Caden with dexterity, right? Um, talking about choosing to do something and, and, and actually doing it, taking action on that. Um, and that's all well and good to just start, 
right? To mm-hmm. just say, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to lose weight. I am going to start reading every day or I'm going to write more, whatever it is, right? Whatever decision you want to start or stop, um, you need to make that decision. And then you support that decision with other smaller positive habits that lead to you not wanting or making it so difficult to not or to do that thing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to lose weight and you need to eat less, you need to be doing other things that are positive that either distract you from your normal snacking habits or eating too much, like proportionally, Mm -hmm. um, that take away that decision almost. Or encourage you to yeah, exactly stack right. it up. Yeah, exactly right. Stacking bodies. So give us, uh, like you're, you've obviously done a lot recently um, to introduce some new habits into your life that you are, are hoping to make you know, permanent. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about those things. Yeah. Uh, first, I think it's important to mention, I think like you in this way, I'm all about starting things and I get... I get excited and I'll start it, but I am really bad at follow through and like consistency. Um, even if I revisit later, I'm like disappointed in the fact that I broke that consistency. Consistency. Um, but recently, I've been really focused on um, like what is it that I, you know, years from now, I want to be able to say I chose this life. And for me, a lot of that relies on my, like, physical and mental health. Am I feeling good? Am I looking good? Am I moving around good? Um, A lot of that plays a role into my happiness. So recently, as I've had quite a few reasons to, like, reevaluate my life and figure out what I want to do to move forward, I know that for me, planning, I'm very analytical and I overthink things and I often run into analysis paralysis. But sometimes I got to let that run its course as well. So like I overthink this, like what's going to be the perfect like routine for my day and structure I can add. And I finally got around to what I would do is as I was studying what I thought would be like the perfect routine, I would add in. I'd kind of have like a, a just do it for like a week. Like just do this one for a while and then just do this one. And I ended up what you're saying, like stacking up um, like four or five good morning habits before I even start work now Hmm. that I've been doing for a few weeks now. And the most recent one we talked about this before we jumped on that you saw on Instagram was I just recently started doing an ice bath in the morning too. Brutal. Not about it. Not for (laughs) me. It's fun though. It's warming up. So I think you're cheating a little bit. You could have done it in the winter and that would have made you a man. Fair enough. Fair enough. (laughs) So we'll see you in the winter when you're still doing it. Right. Right. Absolutely. Or when I'm still working out outside when it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. That's a true measure. Yep. So interesting. So obviously like a lot of what you were talking about has to do with your health, right? Um, Physical and mental. And I think constitution has a lot to do with that, right? Like, like it in, in Dungeons and Dragons, it is the directly your health, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It is also described as like your ability to stave off poisons and, illness and things of that nature. Um, and I think it's very interesting that, um, I mean, you say what you will about the fitness industry. Um, I think there's a lot of harm that can come from the fitness industry personally, especially with our social media, uh, today. Um, a lot of body dysmorphia issues, a lot of misdirects. Exactly right. Everybody has the answer. This is like, you shouldn't be doing squats to full range of motion, or Mm -hmm. you absolutely must be doing squats to full range of motion. Like the, it's so polarized and everyone is right. And everyone is the guru. Everyone is an expert. Um, and And that can be really debilitating from somebody who doesn't have the background or, um, understanding. And so we choose to opt out entirely. Right. Right. And, um, there's this horrible statistic, um, that we are projected by 2030 that over 80% of Americans will be considered overweight. Like that's so bad. Um, and, and it makes perfect sense to be honest. 
you know, like we have all we're we're like five steps away from Wally. You know, we're gonna be floating around in a little chair, drinking our big gulps. Yeah, absolutely right, man. Drinking our eighty-four ounce sodas and whatnot. Like, I get it. You know, it makes perfect sense. Like my my health has massively declined over the last couple of months just because. I'm lazy because well, I, I'm choosing to not prioritize my health and choosing to prioritize other things. And, you know, I'm in a stage of life where that has to happen and that's fine. Um, but I think there's a lot that could still be done to make me feel better and be better for my kids and my family. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that's a very common thing. So in, in, you know, habit stacking, taking from, you know, initiative from last week and the, the dexterity, the ability to act and to move and have agility and take action. Um, how do we hone in that concentration to take our action, make it consistent and make it lasting? Yeah. Um, there's a lot there. I think you kind of hit it for yourself but like you have to ask yourself why right like so what so what if you know what if i want to be that fat sausage rolling around in wally you know just a few years after that we'll be hooked up to power plugs in the matrix anyway so like why not be a fat right. powerhouse you know or you know i don't know i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> <laughs> like so what if i want to be you know fat or so what if like Cause I think there's like some acceptance there too of just like, you know what? Cause it, like being content, it feels good, but sometimes it's the enemy and you don't realize it. But so asking yourself why, like there's two sides of the coin of like, why am I doing this thing? Is it so that I can run around with my kids when they get older or be their rugby coach or whatever, right? Is, is there something I want to be able to achieve down the road? that I'm not doing now. Like, Oh, I've never run a marathon. Maybe I want to run a marathon. Like what's that long-term goal that I can put milestones in front of to get to. Um, but then on the other side of the coin, it's like, what's going to feed into that? Like maybe it's just back to the basics, like getting in more movement. You know, I don't have to get, you know, new yoga pants to go to yoga class or, start sprinting down the street in my neighborhood just so that I'm like running and whatever. Maybe it's going on walks between meetings at work or, you know, just packing a slightly healthier lunch or, you know, so there's like the physical fitness for fitness sake. Like I'm improving the mechanics of like, I have a buddy who really loves rock climbing. Like that's his why, uh, bouldering or indoor most for the most part mm -hmm. but then you know what are the things he does when he's not bouldering workout wise to improve on that because that's a very specific sport mm -hmm. right and you know so he's got like a fingerboard that he can like yeah. hang and Insane. build finger strength and, truly yeah um so yeah there's like the one side of the coin is they'll ask yourself the why like why do i want to do this and it can be as simple as for i want to feel better feel better about myself, feel better about my body, mental health, whatever. And then on the other side, figure out what those things are, those mechanisms that are in place in your body that you can like return back to the basics to improve upon. Um, yeah. Interesting. I think, man, so honestly, like everything that I've been thinking about as this relates to with like as far as habits and like um, maintaining action and resilience, fortitude, uh, vitality, discipline, hardiness, endurance, like it's all building blocks, right? Like as opposed to something like you could even argue with strength or dexterity where it's, it can be a one-time effort, right? Like the mom who lifts a car off of their child right mm -hmm. like that is strength but it isn't sustained strength yeah um you can you know save your girlfriend who's getting crushed by a truck in forks washington and because you're a vampire with super speed right like mm -hmm. you dexterously sprint over there right and then there's like the constitution which is like a true marathon runner like 
Yeah. No one, I don't care who you are, if you have not trained to run a marathon, can run without stopping a marathon. Right. You might be able to finish a marathon, but you will not be able to run a marathon. It cannot be done. Yeah. I will argue that. Anybody who wants to try it, try it. I will time you. I will watch you the whole time, and I will tell you to your face that you cannot be done. I will be your worst nightmare. I don't believe it. Run alongside them and just yell uh, opposite of affirmation. Absolutely right. Yeah. Well, that what's a, what's Defam- the opposite of defamation? defamations? Absolutely. Welcome to trial, baby. We're getting defamed. We could start like a training camp based off of that sole idea. You come here so we can yell at you. Yeah, isn't that called like, military boot camp? Oh, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> No and it works like, for just about all branches of the military except for the Air Force. Yeah. There's a little bit different. Well, yeah. I don't know how Space Force does nowadays. Yeah, I guess that's true. I think, I mean, if we're being honest, I think we're all getting a little soft. So, yeah. but whatever. That's an entirely different topic. Right. For that, you can follow Joe Rogan. Um, interesting, man. I am... I think that, again, I, I said it last week, I think constitution is the most important modifier. And I, I think it's the most important because it has such, it is the only modifier um, as it relates to real human, not fantasy life uh, that has the capacity for changing yourself forever. Um you can have all the intelligence in the world. You can be the smartest man in the room, but if you don't do a dang thing about it, who cares? Right. Um, if you are incredibly strong, whether that's mentally or physically, and you don't do it forever, doesn't matter. Right. Uh, if you look at it from like a religious or gospel standpoint, um, every scripture of all time, whether that's the Quran or um, you know the the vinyasas of you know the Hindu religion or you know. Um, in the Bible, nothing is accomplished. Faith is not um, relevant if it is not sustained, right? Um, it is not a once flash in the pan. It has to be sustained. And that's the same with relationships. It's the same with wanting to be good at anything. It's the same with wanting to play a freaking game at a table with your friends. Like, um that that's truly like the biggest downfall of like unanimously is like people want to play but the big the big bad is the scheduling like yeah right like everybody wants to play but you don't want to play that bad how do you get you five know? or six people together and at yeah. the same time with yeah. all their different yeah so like yeah i don't know man i think it's it's critically important that that we focus more on that individually and like as a people um, as a nation in the Americas, um, that like the stick to the the old American dream, the, yeah. the can do attitude, the old college try, even though neither of us tried college. <laughs> Not hey, great. out of choice, yeah, you know? yeah out of, uh, out of laziness on my part. Well, um, I don't believe in college. It's a moral. Uh, 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 that's know. why I chose not to go. Um, no, I need things. I need a degree, and I'm just lazy about it. I need to finish mine, so yeah. I basically have one. We need to be constitutive about our that's right degree. So, yeah, folks, uh, I would love to hear more uh, information and discussion on this topic, um, but for fear of rambling too far into the nether, are we rambling? I mean, we, I don't we are so. ramblers. We like it. We're ramblers. What what time are we? At? Oh, we're pushing an hour. So Up to you, man. I got all kinds of stuff I can speak to. I saved all my jokes to keep this appropriate. So we can keep this professional. Let's, let's hear short. some jokes, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just really worried. I was gonna, <laughs> like, just by us being together, I was just going to send us off <laughs> your podcast clip, clip yeah. like multiple times. But it's very possible. I'm proud of myself. I am too, man. I'm trying to I'm... be more like Dell, you know. And I'm trying to be more like Coop. Oh, thanks, man. Coop, where can we find you, man? What's your address? What's your social? Uh, not giving you either of those. Nah, that's a shame. Um, and my stealth is like plus five. I'll post so it in the show notes. 
<laughs> I don't think you can find me. I got plus five stealth, so nineteen. Yeah, that's not bad. Not a bad yeah. stealth roll. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything really going for me right now. Uh, as far well, other than I guess Instagram, but that's you can tag tag me on anything if you want. But for sure, that's about it. Yeah, and I look forward to being a returning guest too, because I know you and I have all kinds of things that we can just talk forever about. Absolutely. And I like this. I love what you're doing. It inspires me. And uh, keep going, dude. Perhaps be on the lookout for a Jake and Tyler Cooper team up. What does that in mean? In the future, a side project, mayhaps. Okay. I don't know. You, we'll see. Right. We have ideas. Yeah. Do we have follow through? No. We're working Less. on it. So we could roll for follow through. No, yeah. that's constitution. Go ahead, and give, go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. See but if we, we can don't do it. have a plus five on constitution. No, we like do Bell not. Does. Ten. Ten. Split down so the middle. So 50 50, guys. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Flip a coin at home. See yeah. if we will do anything about it. Um, folks, this has been the Dungeon Mastermind podcast. Um, it's a pretty fun project for me. I enjoy this a lot. I get to catch up with some friends. Um, that I haven't talked to in a long time, and I get to share something that I'm very passionate about, um, being Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I'd love to interview everybody in the dog. So I'll come get you on some board. people. And uh, yeah, give us a follow. Um, hit us up on the reviews. Uh, shoot us a message. We'll maybe I don't know answer some questions. Um, I'm gonna be doing some Mastermind Mondays, shooting out some tips and tricks to make your Dungeons and Dragons games more interesting. Um, and we got things cooking, y'all. Um, I'm excited to uh, be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, go home, kiss your wife if you have one, kiss your husband if you have one of them, kiss your parents if you have them. Um, like just like kiss a stranger, stranger, honestly, like, uh, with consent, of course, uh, cause we, right. That's, that's we important. Encourage consent. Absolutely. Right. We require consent. 10 for consent. Yep. 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At this point you kind of can't tell. <laughs> exactly. Folks, All right. take it easy. I'll see you when I see you or I'll see you another time. Classic. <laughs>